to dress up the old-fashioned way, but most of them didn't. It's just fun just to look back at some of those pictures. This one here happened to be uh, during the Central School's 100th birthday. So it was built in 1895, so this picture was taken in 1995. Women's clubs. Boy, did we have women's clubs here. The first one that we know of, that we're aware of, is the Women's Club, and today it's called Grand Rapids Women's Club uh, North Star Unit. They started the original library here in town. They started collecting books and had it at Central School, so you could go there and check them out. And then Carnegie arrived uh, years later, and then we built the Carnegie Library. But this group of women were at a uh, gathering of Women's Club, and they could bring their um, escort with them. It was a great time. I know that some of these were from the Deer River area. And this would have been in probably the late 60s. I'll have to look that one up, but that would be that era. Swedish Club, we had a lot of clubs around here. And in those clubs, they had the women's groups. In the churches, you had the women's group. This one here was a Swedish Club. So in looking at this picture, Agnes Rylas in here, um, Roberta Lampy, um, Ruth Rasmussen, she was a school teacher that toured all over Itasca County. Uh, they're making the Swedish cookies. Now we're getting a little bit more modern because we're getting into color pictures. Color pictures didn't come in until the 60s, so a lot of the black and white, we never knew what their color were of their outfits and what they did. But in a lot of that we know of in the written down, that, that women liked bright colors. They did not go for the dark. So even when the color pictures came in, uh, this here picture was in the another club, uh, American University Women's Club. We had quite a few people that are women that were stewardesses from this area. And a lot of them lived in other places, came here and retired. And of course, you know, is being a stewardess, everything had to be just so. Kind of switching back, we have a couple more of the little kids. This one here, isn't she just a doll? Oh my goodness, had leggings and a little dress. Very, I would say, um, today-ish. Isn't that just cute? All the big bows. Now, uh, we always try to get from the whole Itasca County, so we can't just say that it's Grand Rapids. This one here, uh, we really like the picture. Her hat is just absolutely beautiful. But look at what she's sitting on. This was considered, to me, a stump. And, you know, they're sitting together. There's big trees back then. And of course, Nashwalk was all, uh, the white pine was all cut down before they even found the mines. So Nashwalk, even though it wasn't a city back then, the trees were all cut down and then it became a, what is called a, a mining uh, community. This is really neat, a wedding dress that's like our typical, not what we would see today as a wedding dress, and but very sophisticated. I'm going to show you a couple of different styles. And we know that in, in our areas, we have, and even known today, that we have a lot of massage parlors, we have a lot of hairdressers. We actually, in Itasca County, really look at how we look to other people. And a lot of people use all of those services, and they're uh, growing all the time. Ah! I told you I was going to talk to you about the swimsuits. This is one of them. They're made out of wool, and I can't imagine swimming in them and how heavy they would be. But that's the style. We have several of them in our collection, and that's exactly what they look like. And when you pick them up, even when they're dry, they're heavy. So, I don't know, maybe it's because the water was cold. <laughs> Not quite sure on that one. Just a beautiful picture of a couple. She's wearing a hat. The dress is a little bit shorter, so I would say late 40s, approaching the 50s. This is a photographer, <laughs> a very unique picture because usually you don't take a picture of a person taking a picture, but they just kind of turned around and <laughs> took a picture. Very stylish outfit though, Oof. really, really cool. 
sometimes when people say they style their clothes that they don't, uh, it's their own style. But I look back at some of these pictures and it's like trendy that the styles all come back again. So this picture came to us from the Minnesota Historical Society. And in looking at it, you're like, what? Wood sidewalks? Yes, we had lots of wood sidewalks. If you stepped off the wood sidewalks in the rainy season, it was horrible. So a lot of the women's shoes were actually boots because they would come at least halfway up on the leg. And in all that we have, that's how high they were. And it was mainly because of the mud. This location would have been right in front of Indian Joe's looking towards the north. So in your memory, remember where Indian Joe's was, today it is where Lakes Area Credit Union is built. This here is on Pacagama Avenue. So in looking across the street, that white building, there was two hotels there. Uh, City Hall is way up on the corner, but those two hotels burned down. And they were there for many years, and then a gas station uh, was there for many years, and then the North Print building was built. This is one of two pictures that we have of those buildings before they were burnt. Look at that. Looks like, hmm, I'm trying to guess what the guy was. Carrying a bag that looks kind of like a doctor's bag, but I don't know. Maybe it was a Sunday go meeting day or something, because they're pretty dressed up there. We celebrated in Itasca County the last 20 years all of the birthdays, the city birthdays. Uh, Deer River, Grand Rapids, Colerain, Taconite, Pengilly, all of those centennial. Uh, first they celebrated their um, Diamond Jubilees, their other anniversaries, but in the last 20 years we've celebrated all the centennials. So now we're looking at the Grand Rapids area in particular as celebrating its 125th, which is very hard to pronounce, but it's the sesquicentennial birthday, and we're pretty excited about that in 2016. Authors. We have a lot of women authors in our area, and Itasca County Historical Society collects their books, and some of them we're able to sell. Uh, Suzanne is a wonderful author that has written several books and pretty much is a comical writer. She now has written all of the uh, basement church basement plays. She There's a couple of them that author those together. This is another picture of Amy Porter way back in the early days. Uh, this is what's called a tintype picture and it looks like it has a little bit of the bluing to it, a very serious look about her, and no hat. Very rarely did they take a portrait. This is what would be called a portrait. She's not looking at the camera. That very rarely happened. Oh my goodness, this is gonna bring back memories. We have a lot of people that uh, participated in bands a lot of women that like to play instruments. Uh, this is Doug and Ethel Deal that love to dance all around in all of the clubs all over Itasca County. If they had a dance, those two were there. <laughs> they were so much fun. This is at their 25th wedding anniversary. And the reason why I picked this picture is because of the coffee pot. Do you see that right there in the middle on that table? Isn't that just the coolest thing in the cupboards? Very rarely do we get inside the kitchen kind of look, but that is really, really cool. Ethel was beautiful, and I always tell people that even though Doug was the, what you call the editor of the Scenic Rage News, that it didn't get done without, without Ethel. She was the one that worked behind the scenes, that did so much work that, uh, to produce that paper and make it what, it what it is today. The power horse is what I call it. <laughs> Graduation. You know, today we're really fortunate that uh, kids are able to graduate going through their 12th year. But a lot of obituaries that we read from back in those days, if you made it through eighth grade, you were fortunate. Pretty much because after eighth grade, it was so much of a survival rate that you needed your children to help on the farm, to do the things that needed to be done. And eighth grade was pretty much the level that you went by. Usually, 
in a lot that we have, by the time you're 20 years old, you had a family already started. This one here is so cute because it was taken in front of the... So this is a really neat classroom picture um, that was taken in front of the old original high school. In today's terms would be where the District 318 office is. And you can see uh, the school. I would say this is their class picture. It's so cute if you look at the little ones on the right. Her hair ribbon is sticking straight up. It's so cool. And uh, very much, I, we always try to guess the age, but in looking at this, I would say we're looking at second to third grade. Why they would be at the high school, I don't know, because the school closest to them would have been Central School. So we always try to guess that too. Why would some classroom be down there? We're not sure. Isn't this just the coolest picture? It's like they're waiting to go to church or something. It's just so cool. Little guy, got her hair up in a ribbon, little boots. Wabana area. I just love to look at the steps that they're on. Imagine that carved wood. Isn't that just, it is so cool. Sports. Women were involved with sports through the ages. This one here we wanted to show the skis are taller than the women. Can you imagine skiing on something like that, that tall? But we do know that a lot of skis were used back in those days, traveling from one point to the next. So involved in the sports, it wasn't until probably the last 30 years that the sports teams and everybody kind of got more involved with the, what the women were doing in sports. This lady was very sophisticated. The reason why it's in our collection, I, I don't know. But for me personally, it's her clothes. Oh my, in this area, that hat is absolutely beautiful. The detail on that outfit. So, and we know it's a portrait. It's not showing any more than just the top half. So now we're gonna show you some of the portraits that were taken here. This is a totally different style. The dress all the way to the floor, the bunting that was done. We even have models that look like that here at the Historical Society. The ones that have that bustle in the front, of course, back then didn't have the bras, so there wasn't support. Children pictures, we just love the little outfits, little sailor suits, the baptismal gowns that were huge, long. We have several of those in the collection. This is Margaret Gunn. Now, Margaret Gunn's parents were probably the most well-known here. They owned the Pekegama Hotel and they had one daughter. So we have a massive collection of Margaret's pictures from when she was a little girl. Growing up, she toured all over the world. She was one of those that in her documents and diaries, she wrote in many hotels using their letterhead stories back to people here in the Grand Rapids area. She never did have any children of her own. Very sophisticated lady. She married Louis Laurent and they lived a block north of City Hall. A very nice home that they had and their collection came to the Historical Society uh, upon their deaths and they toured, traveled, and love to come back, always come back to this area. This is one of my favorite pictures. This, and if you look at it directly, this is a wagon out in the middle of a field. And this would be what they would put their horses or their, attach their oxen to. The women, the one on the right is, has her apron on. Uh, the one on the left would probably be the next generation up, which would obviously help out, but the younger one is on the right, and more than likely those are her children. We just wanted to put some fun pictures in here too of different outs, outfits and for you to guess what the lifestyle, 1926. The dresses are just a little bit shorter. By the time they got the 20s and 30s, uh, they got shorter than that. This is so neat. These little kids were out playing on their horse. It's handmade. You can tell that it had been cut out, carved.
but uh, and I was surprised actually that it wasn't blurry on this one <laughs> the fish is like half this girl's size and the tent this is what we look at the tent is set up you can see a log building behind and this little girl that's very proud probably of a fish that she might have caught but not likely. There would have been somebody else but showing it off. Out in the woods, this one here, when they did this they had to write the kids names right on top of the picture. We find this a lot in our collection. Uh, it's really nice for us because we can identify uh, family members. A lot of people go to Ancestry.com and look up those names to find out where they were in the family situation. We have a lot of resort pictures, and this is what they did in resorts. They would hang their fish catch up for the day and then have their pictures taken behind. Most of the people that are in these pictures are from not our area. We found that they would be coming in from Chicago. They would, uh, a lot from the Illinois area, Iowa. Surprisingly, we, we kept this picture because it had women behind. Mostly, it would have been men that were behind the pictures, but uh, we kept this one in our collection. Another fun picture, uh, you saw one of these earlier, and this one here, uh, the hats. So I always tell people to look at the hats, because you can tell the era. They weren't wearing boots, so we know it was in the summertime more. Uh, but surprisingly, long sleeve, I can't imagine how uh, hot it would have been. But of course, the material back then was a lightweight cotton. So in here, black and white, they would have been probably white or cream color. I'm going to talk a little bit more about skiing and this is sure enough one of those pictures where the skis were taller than the women look at that they're in long dresses skiing across can you believe that this one here they were going to get on the train and they had 18 miles to ski to get onto the train uh, today in our ski hills if you have to go 10 miles it's like a long time Imagine traveling 18 miles to uh, get on the train and having to hold that between you to pull your, your clothes with. It just, it just kind of sometimes we, we say boggles the mind on that. In hats, very sophisticated. Very rare to see a picture inside at Christmas time. Of course, you know in the wintertime it was quite dark. You didn't have all of that, but to take this picture and I call it the Charlie Brown tree. Of course, everybody would go out and cut down their tree and whatever they could put on the tree, that's what it would be. And that's what we have a picture of. It's really neat, it has a log building and uh, standing by their Charlie Brown tree. <laughs> we put this one in here so we had to laugh because the men dressed up in the women's clothes and the women dressed in the men's clothes. It took us a minute to figure this one out. It was so much fun. <laughs> and then it just makes you laugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh boy, it'd be more common today than it would have been back then. <laughs> so, <laughs> I just thought it was funny. We do have some funny pictures too in the collection. To me, this is um, real relevant as to what happened in that era that uh, the dresses were getting shorter. This would be probably the late 50s, and men still in suits. Very rare did you see the hats this time. I hope you've enjoyed this one on uh, what we call yesteryear for the women and not not particularly just talking about individual women but as a society and we end with this picture and this is a Peter Pan tree. We love to document history and the Peter Pan tree was one of those that tells a thousand words in a picture. It, if you are just new to our area this tree was on central school grounds it had a big hole in it and people would actually stop along the highway when they saw this tree and would take their picture we collect as many pictures of the Peter Pan tree as we can so if you have some in your collection and have a, a picture and could bring it into the historical society that would be great we would scan it and give it back to you and hopefully in the future we can tell the story of the Peter Pan tree at Old Central School Thank you and hopefully you will join us another time for another story.